What's up YouTube? In this tutorial we're going to cover how to build a custom cursor interaction in Webflow. So many of the tutorials you'll see for this out there require you to add that interaction to every single button or link class across the whole site and it's easy to forget to add that to new links that you add later on or if in a collection page rich text if your client adds a link it may not have this custom cursor so in this tutorial, we're going to add a custom cursor that um, automatically has this hover state for every single link on the site without you having to add the interaction manually. So in Webflow, there's a little bit of custom code we'll need. It's not a lot. I'll put it in the project description. But the first thing we're going to do is from your um, project under custom code, under the footer code, we're going to add some script, which is the second part called script. And then we're going to need an open and close script tag if you don't already have one that looks something like this. And then once you have that, we can paste in our custom code. That's all we need. We don't have to change anything there. So then we can jump right into the designer view and start building out our custom cursor the way we want it. So um, I like to keep my custom cursor inside a symbol, like maybe the nav or footer symbol, somewhere that it's always going to be on every page. And if I make a change to it, it makes a change everywhere. So let's add that div block into the nav for now. And it has to be given the class cursor. That's the class it has to have. Um, and then you need to do position fixed and cover the whole width and height of the screen. And we can also type in width 100% and height 100 VH and that'll also do the same thing. For Z index we need to give it the highest possible. It needs to be above like everything on top of every element possible and then we're going to drag the cursor dot inside of this cursor container. So inside that cursor div we're going to create a new one. We'll call it cursor uh, underscore dot and the class name doesn't really matter for this one. Um, so the cursor, the parent, we're going to need flexbox and we're going to need a line and justify to the center. So that way the dots in the middle of this container and then the dot itself can have a background color of our choosing. Um, it can have a width and height. Um, maybe we'll round off the corners with the radius, um, something like that. And so now we have this problem because this cursor is kind of like on top of everything, so we can't actually click the links behind it because this div is covering up everything. So that's where we need this next bit of custom code. And this is everything under styles. This is some CSS. So again, I like to keep my CSS inside a symbol. That way, any changes I make to it on one page are made across all pages. Um, you can also put it in the page settings, but to see these changes live, um, it's best to put it in an embed on the page. So from here, we can just paste in our CSS and we're good to go. And uh, now we actually, if we open back up the nav, we can't click on this cursor from the designer anymore because we added something that makes it not clickable. So we would have to click on the layers right here to be able to access it. Um, so now let's set up our interaction. So we can add a page trigger interaction and it would be mouse move in viewport and this is what's going to move the dot around the page so we'll create a new animation um, we'll add a new one here we'll call it uh, cursor move and then we need to select the cursor dot and then we'll add a new one here for move and we want this to target the class so move we want it to be negative 50 viewport width so it's all the way over here in this corner of the screen and then for the next side we want it to be positive 50 viewport width the way it moves it all the way to this side another move uh, this will be the second field this time it'll be negative 50 vh for viewport height and then for the last one 50 vh positive and we want this to target the class um, so that should move the uh, cursor to all corners everywhere around her. And then if you want it to be directly on point, just turn the smoothing all the way down. And then it will be directly on point with the mouse. But if you turn the smoothing up, it'll kind of lag behind the mouse uh, the more you have the smoothing turned up. 
So we got that, that part's working fine, and we'd need to add this interaction to every page we plan to use it on, on the site, this mouse move in viewport, but we still need the part that uh, hovers when you hover over a link, the cursor would change. So for that, what we're gonna need to do is select the cursor, not the dot, but the cursor. We're gonna create an element trigger that is mouse click or tap, and then this will affect the class. So on first click, we're gonna create an animation called cursor grow. And then basically we wanna select the dot and we'll probably just scale it up a good bit. So we'll scale and we'll also maybe drop the opacity some. So opacity would be lower. And that, that looks pretty good. Maybe just add some easing to this. And then we need cursor shrink for the second animation. We'll create a new one. Um, so then we'll select the dot again. And then this time we'll change the opacity back to 100%. And we'll change the scale back to one. And then we can add some easing to that again. So we're not actually gonna see it shrink or grow in the Webflow preview, we're gonna have to publish the site to be able to see the change um, from the page. And then, so if we go to the page now and we hover over any one of these links, the cursor grows and the opacity fades. Anytime we hover over any link on the site, doesn't matter what the link is. So the next thing we need to do is like, if I drag my uh, mouse outside of the browser window, you'll see that cursor is kind of just still there. Um, so we want it to disappear and only appear when our cursor's in the viewport. So to do that, all we need to do is take the, um, we have some custom code in the CSS that's already going to, when the mouse is in view of the body, change the cursor class, and this should have been cursor, I'll change that in the Webflow code, to opacity of one. So then by default, we just need to take this cursor and change the opacity to zero. Um, and then if we want this to be smooth, we can add some transitions to opacity. That way it just fades instead of just snapping. Um, but that part's totally optional for sure. You'll even notice it's already kind of doing it in the Webflow preview. So like when my cursor is in view, we see the dot. When it's out of view, we don't see the dot. Um, so on the live site, now we can move our cursor around. We're seeing the dot. Move our cursor out of the window. It disappears back into the window. It comes back in. So that's everything we need um, to build a custom cursor in Webflow.